Welcome my friends to a very rare video of mine, me playing. Since I've gotten so many questions on the subject matter, I have decided to make an elaborate video where I will reveal to you 12 tips which will help you beat robots. I've played robots for three plus years and I do have a 92% win rate, which is not bad. So I know a thing or two about beating robots. So in this video, I will be showing you eight full matches using different characters with different skill cards and some matches with no skill cards at all. Some of them will be plus eight, jump in size, plus six, some none, superpowers, double. Now, before I show you the matches, um, I am going to go with you over the 12 tips. And this will be done, each one for one minute. I'll go through some examples and then we are going to watch the matches. Now, keep in mind that this applies when playing robots only, although there are some strategies that you could use against real players. So they're two different worlds. I play against robots only. So it's a very good video and it will help you guarantee with practice a 90% win rate over robots. So they're very good. They work as you will see. And um, before we actually go into this, I'll be more than grateful if you can subscribe to the channel and post a like on the video. This motivates me. So this is a very rare video of mine, but it was actually cool to put it all together. So let's go over the 12 tips first, then we'll be showing you eight live full matches. Big ups. Before we move on to the next section, I just want to share something with you about how to find videos. Here I'm on my mom's account. So if you want to find any types of videos, you just type Pounce Headball 2 and any keyword. I have titled the video so that the main words are in the title and I've got over 200 videos, so it might be hard to find, but here we used Mega Pack. And if you want to look at character, you know, you put Pounce Headball 2, you will get characters, read the titles, obviously look at my logo if it's my channel. And sometimes other videos appear, but YouTube does the search by video title. So here was character. And here we can go on the manager. Headball 2, Pounce Headball 2 manager, you will see all my videos. So what I just want to let you know is that this is how you find videos. You know, upgrades is another example. There you go, upgrading, upgrades. So this is just what I wanted to share with you. Some people ask me sometimes, how do I find this? Where is this video? Player of the match. I've got a playlist. So I also have playlists where they are arranged, but it can be hard to find videos. So the morale of the story is you type in pounce, headball two, and then whatever keyword you are looking for, most likely you will find it. And after having done this, if you haven't found it, then I will definitely help you. So this is what I wanted to share. We will be moving on to the next section very shortly. Okay, tip number one, choose your superpowers carefully. We each have different superpowers we like to use. However, there is actually a way within the game to determine which ones gives you the best odds to score and which ones gives you the best odds to defend and not concede goals. Basically, which superpowers are good and which ones are not so good. All we have to do is go to the free superpower section where you watch an advert in return for superpowers. If after watching an advert, you are given a times one, this means that it is a premium superpower. On the other side, if you are given a times two, it means that it is a superpower of lesser strength, or in other words, it is less effective, meaning you are less likely to score or more likely to concede whilst using it. My preference of superpowers, as the screen shows, are as follows, and as you will see, they are all premium superpowers times one. Freeze for offense or defense, clone goalie for defense, double goal for offense, giant player for offense and defense, Bomb for offense and defense. And lastly, fireball for offense. Tip number two, place your superpowers carefully. You might think that you can place your superpowers anywhere and it won't make a difference, but the truth could not be further from that. How you place superpowers on the grid affects how it is placed on the match screen while you play. 
The top superpowers are the most important because those are the first three that will appear while you play. As you can see from my match screenshot, I have placed my superpowers in a way which guarantees me freeze and offense. And if I need to score two to four goals, depending on whether I add the double superpower skills card and the clone goalie. If I am up by a goal or two and really need to ensure that I do not concede, the choice is yours, but always make sure that you give yourself the option of benefiting from having options for offense and defense within a few seconds remaining. If your good superpowers are, for example, in fourth, fifth, and sixth position, and there are a few seconds left in the match, you will naturally panic because you will have to use the superpowers in positions one, two, or three. And believe me, from experience, with only a few seconds left, this creates total chaos. You better be safe than sorry. Tip number three, choose your skill cards and superpower skill cards carefully. This game is all about size and jump. In my opinion, speed and shoot superpower skill cards are useless when playing against robots. It's not the same, obviously, if you play against real players. Against robots, you definitely want to include your highest jump and size skill cards available. This is what I do. On top of that, since I face level 7 robots, namely Flashpunk and Omen, I always use the added freeze and double goal superpowers, which pretty much guarantees me two to four goals when playing. As we saw from tip number two, if I only have a few seconds remaining, by adding these two superpower skill cards, I guarantee myself the chance and opportunity to score two to four goals. Tip number four, let the robot or bot use all of its superpowers before you use yours. By letting the robot use all of its superpowers first, you can more easily calculate your odds of beating them with your remaining superpowers. This also makes it less pressure on you. In most cases, but not always, robots will use all of their superpowers one after another, meaning all of them within the first 20 to 30 seconds. Again, this is not always, but in the vast majority of cases. My rule of thumb is to concede less than four goals in total after the robot has used all of his. If I am under four goals, I am extremely confident that I will win. Five goals conceded is still okay, but on the borderline, if it is more than six goals, then we are in trouble. Try to apply this mindset, which will enable you to focus more and you will see results fast. It all comes down to practice and discipline. Tip number five, learn to master countering all robots' superpowers and when they use them. The robots I face pretty much use only a few select combination of superpowers. Almost always starting with bomb superpower followed by the freeze. Thereafter, it is a mixture, mixture of giant player, giant goal, fireball, big ball, freeze goal, clone balls, invisibility, and added time superpowers. The first step is for you to anticipate the pattern and get comfortable defending. I have personally mastered the art of not conceding very often when the robot or bot uses the bomb, freeze and fireball superpowers, as you will see when I play. It's not 100%, but I have definitely increased my defensive skills when the robot uses its superpowers. This saves me conceding three goals per game. It makes a huge difference. Tip number six, only use your superpowers when needed or required. Don't forget that every time that you use a superpower, gems are going away, whether it is gold, emeralds, or diamonds. Over the course of a season, a month, and a year, it adds up to a lot. Forgetting this fact, however, learning to only use your superpowers when required will make you become a stronger player. You will be developing your jumping and shooting techniques, but most importantly, as mentioned in tip 5, you will naturally become better at anticipating, blocking and countering the robot's use of its superpowers. Using your superpowers only when required will make you become an excellent gamer because you will improve on technical areas of the game. Tip number 7. Spend most of the time in your own half. 
This really comes down to simple geometry and algebra. Every time you venture further away from your goal, meaning towards your opponent's goal, the amount of space available to your opponent to score a goal on you becomes bigger. I am not saying that you should never go outside of your half, but only do so when required. Staying in your own half and applying tip number 12, which is popping the ball up, drawing your opponent towards you, turns what we just mentioned in your favor. Instead of you being mathematically and geometrically exposed by staying in your own half, you make the robot become exposed, thus increasing the size and margin for your scoring potential. You will understand it better when I show you the live playing matches. Tip number eight, learn to master the art of using your back wall. Since you will be spending most of the time in defense because you are staying in your own half and because the robot will be harassing you in front of your goal, you must make use of everything available to you. More often than not, the ball will be moving back and forth between your goal bar and the robot with you in the middle, sometimes even spending more time in the air. I am talking about the ball. By using the back wall, you will get the chance to loop the ball over the robot and shooting in an empty net. This technique is very beneficial and becomes very handy, but it does take some time and practice to master. Once you do it, you will really enjoy these types of goals. They are fun and it is an area that will give you two to four goals per match. Remember to always shoot down after the ball has passed the robot. Tip number nine. Don't jump too often, stay on the ground. This is great for defense too. The very nature of the game is to jump all over the place and it becomes a habit. And the developer Massimo knows this. The robots have been designed to score in two places primarily as we will see in tip number 10. Remember also that robots use artificial intelligence, AI. And by you not jumping, you will be confusing them. In a lot of instances, robots will try to score underneath you. Once again, let's not be absolutist here. I am not saying that you should never jump. I am saying that you should jump only when required. Once again, it all comes down to reading and anticipating the moves of the robot. In due time, this is a concept that will become second nature to you, but it does take time and practice like anything else. Tip number 10. The robot will score from two angles and places only most of the time. Be ready. Even though I know exactly where the robot will score against me, it is not always easy to counter it, especially not against level 7 robots or whilst they are using their superpowers. However, in reality, there are only two places from where the vast majority of goals you concede will be entering your goal. At the very top, as you've probably guessed, or right underneath you while you are jumping. This is what we talked about in the previous tip, not jumping too often or only jumping when required. There are times when the robot will jump so high and kick the ball before it has even reached it. Again, this is part of the game and understanding that there are only two basic spots from which the ball can enter your goal and you becoming conscious about it will make you react quicker and anticipate things way ahead of time. You will naturally get better because you know where the ball is going to enter your goal. Tip number 11. Keep the ball on the ground when the robot is jumping and then score under him. During parts of a match or in some cases the entire match, you will see and observe that all the robot does is jumping all over the place. This can become extremely frustrating because most of the time you shoot up, you will see that it becomes very difficult to score. I have developed a technique that makes you counter this. All you have to do while the robot is jumping in its own half is to control the ball and make it stay on the ground. You then advance towards the robot very slowly, getting close enough, and all you have to do is time your shot, shooting down, right before you touch the robot, while it is in the air. This will make the ball slide underneath him. Again, this takes a lot of time and practice, but by mastering it, you will get many more wins out of the game. Tip number 12, it's simple. Pop the ball up, make the robot comes to you, jump and shoot. I have stated this in previous videos and this is the bread and butter of the game. It does take some practice and in my case, I don't even require skill cards anymore. So all you have to do, 
when the robot is in its own half is you pop the ball up you move slightly forward by doing this the robot will be advancing towards you you move backward you jump and you time your shot appropriately again this doesn't work 100 percent of the time but by mastering it you will get goals 70 to 80 percent of the time by adding skill cards you definitely will jump higher which will increase your chances of scoring goals but this is a technique that you must master and this is the bread and butter of the game this is how you score the majority of goals okay we are now match number one out of eight omen level seven versus flashpunk robot so i'm putting all the tips on the bottom i'm not going through the superpowers here i'm putting my skill cards uh, plus eight jump plus eight size freeze extra and double goal extra i will show you the skills in the next video i forgot to do that and I will have the explanations on the match screen. So pay attention to the tips. It's very important. So let the robot use all of its superpowers before you use yours. Learn to counter the superpowers of the bots. Only use yours if and when required. Don't jump too often. Try to stay on the ground and spend most of the time in your own half. Now I'm putting a fence here for reference purposes. I will do this for the first few matches. And the arrow here is where the, the bot will score. Now for the bomb... You have to strike it as close to the robot as possible. It will give you a goal. So here's the classic strategy. Pop the ball up, draw the robot in, time the shot and shoot. And for freezing, you want to kick down. It breaks the ice faster, as you can see. So fireball, you want to start jumping as soon as you see the flames. And for reverse, you just have to learn to play with it. And uh, on the invisibility, you want to jump and kick constantly as fast as you can until the ball reappears. I mean, this is a tough one. But here again, tip number 12. That's the bread and butter of the game. And um, yeah, the fence is for reference purposes. As you can see, I have not ventured in the opponent's half at all. And that's what you want to do, really. Don't jump too often. See here. I didn't jump too often and I jumped right when the ball was popping up. So this is something that takes practice too. And here's the back wall. This is very important. You'll see this in all the matches. Uh, we talked about, you know, using the back wall. You want to get very comfortable with that. And here again, you can count it as a back wall. It bounced off my post, my bar. But you can see I'm not jumping too often. I'm just jumping when required. And here the robot will score on me. Again, pop the ball up, draw the robot in. It obviously helps with the skill cards. And you will see from um, the matches, when you use skill card plus eight, you are paired against level seven robots. When you use skill cards plus six or no skill cards at all, you are paired with level six. I just found that out while playing, actually. So it's not always that you will face level seven robots. It depends on your skill cards. And as we talked about the tip on using your superpowers, only use yours when required, don't waste them. So now you click on the robot's name and you will see that it is a level seven. There you go, you see it's level seven. And um, basically when you put the plus eight cards, you will be paired against robots at level seven. If you don't put plus eight, you'll be paired at level six. That's pretty much it, we'll be moving on to the next match. Okay, match two of eight, Doom Lord level seven versus Flashpunk level seven with plus eight skill cards. Tip one, choose your superpowers carefully. Tip two, place them carefully as we talked about. And here we are using, as the previous match, plus eight jump, plus eight size, uh, double goal and freeze superpower. I will change them up. There are eight matches in total, so I need to change my character. Don't forget to let the robot use all of its superpowers before you use yours. Learn to anticipate and counter their use of superpowers. Only use your superpowers when and if required. Very important not to jump too often, staying on the ground. And again, we have a fence here. Spend most of the time in your half. Half the matches will have the fence, half won't. So I put the fence here. And there's a bomb here. I ventured outside my half and look what happens. 
If you actually pay attention, you will see that the majority of goals you concede are in the robot's half. So only jumping when required. You see here I'm on the ground, could shoot down. He will score here again, same position, top or bottom. Pop the ball up, draw the robot in, shoot. Pretty simple. And when I see the ball is coming towards my half, I try to attack it. And here, as I said in a previous video, click down, shoot to break the ice faster. And here we're using the back wall again, as you just saw. It's very important. Pop the ball up, go forward, shoot. It takes some practice, but when you master it, it becomes pretty easy. So when the ball's in the middle of the ground like this, you want to attack it. And you can see from my movements, I only jump when required or if I anticipate something happening. Here he shot down. That was pretty poor defense. Again, shooting up. Not jumping too much, staying in my half, trying to anticipate what's going on. As you can see from the tip, it's very important. Bad anticipation here. That's all right. Back wall again. And when you use the back wall, you always want to shoot down. Why is that? Is because sometimes when the ball is behind the robot, he will use freeze goal. So if you shoot up, it actually won't go in. So again, you can see I'm staying down, not jumping like an idiot, like a crazy person, only when required. And you really want to try to concede less than five goals after the robot has used all of its superpowers. He hasn't used all of his here. But it's a pretty comfortable win. And like I said in other tip, you let him use all of his superpowers. And here I didn't have to use any. This is the importance of putting the freeze and the double goal here. I got four goals. I can pretty much score in four seconds. So this is why I use that. I got a bit of fire burning. And we click on the name. I get a ball basket here. We'll click on the name. And you can see it's level seven robot. And as I said in the previous match, when you put your plus eight skill cards, you will face level seven. And when you put plus six and below, apparently you face level six. Okay, match number three out of eight, Cupid level seven with no skill cards. And because we have no skill cards, we'll be playing a robot at level six. I'm not gonna go over the tips before the match. I've done this twice. You should always think about this. So here I'm at level seven Cupid. As you can see, no skill cards will be used whatsoever, but the concepts and the principles are the same. Uh, one of the most, two of the most important things, I think, is to stay in your own half and um, not jump too often. Like all the tips on the bottom, they're very important. I have a 92% win rate against robots over three plus years. So you can take my word for it. So there you go. Let's see what happens here. I think I'm going to use the back wall here because obviously I am speaking over and while watching the video. So the back wall was used here. When the opponent does a giant goal, you want to come as close as possible. And then we went over the bomb here. Let the opponent come close and then shoot. So you are both disabled, freeze, you kick down. Doesn't always work. But um, one tip I will give you on the freeze is to try to jump and position yourself midway between the bar and the ground. So even if he does, you know, shoot, it, it, you make it harder for him to score, basically. So here again, we're using a back wall. I score anywhere between one and four goals per match using the back wall. And here on the fireball, I jumped a bit too early. But as soon as you see the flames... You want to time it and I, again the green arrow shows you know when he's not on superpowers this is where the majority of goals will go and then some underneath you so you want to pay attention to these things but tip number 12 is how i win most matches you pop the ball up you draw the opponent in and pretty much score and you can see i don't have any skill cards so you know it, it, it's all about practice and I don't have the fence here. I will put the fence in the last two videos again. So, you know, pop the ball up, draw the robot in, time, shoot. Don't jump too often. Stay on the ground. It's pretty much repetitive. But um, you do this long enough 
and you will master it. So very important so that you don't use your superpowers until you really need to. Let the robot use all of his. And um, nine seven here again, popping the ball up. You can see I've got no skill card, so it's all practice and timing. But these tips will make a difference when you play. And here I'm at ten eight. If I'm not mistaken, I will score. I will concede another goal. Um, yep, here. So there's three seconds. I could use the clone goalie, but I decide to freeze again. I only use the superpower because I really needed it. And it's all about, you know, your gems. You use all your superpowers. Some people like to do it. Well, you're going to spend money. I've got a little graphics here. So let's click on the robot. And you will see that level six, because I have no skill cards. And we will be moving on to the next match. Okay, match four of eight with Cyberjack, level six, no skill cards against flashpunk level six not going over the tips you should memorize them you should work on it you should practice and you should not forget about them again i will repeat 92 percent win rate over three years against robots if there's one person you can count on it's me so cyberjack no skill cards and um, these tips will really help you you will notice a difference immediately I'm not putting the fence. I will put the fence in the last two matches. It's important that you have a mental fence. Remember these tips. So here we go. Click the like button, of course. All right, here we have freeze. Unfortunately, he went fast. And we have bomb. You let the guy come close to you and then you explode both of you. Usually it will loop over him and you get a goal. I jumped a bit too early again. Here. Pop the ball up, draw the opponent in, shoot. Bread and butter of the game. Again, spend the time in your half. Don't go venturing. Make it a habit. You will notice differences. Massive improvements. Again, tip number 12. See, I didn't jump too much, so I counted here. Only jump when you need to. I'm saying you shouldn't do this, you know, for the rest of your life, but for a month or two, you know, just practice on that. You know, I didn't jump here, right? And you see that I counted. Just practice, practice, practice. And then when you've mastered it, you can jump around all you want. But the problem is, you see, when you don't move, you actually confuse the bot. You see, by not moving, sometimes you're confusing him because the robot assumes that you will come and jump. And here I considered a goal on the bottom. Again, you will see how many times goals are scored this way. It's, it's, it's amazing. Again, bad defending on me. I knew it was coming. Pop the ball up. I think this is the fourth or fifth time. I saw you win. It's repetitive. Yep. Oftentimes the robot will score own goals. Remember, you're not playing a real player, you're playing a robot. So the robot, you know, has been designed to have some artificial intelligence. Back wall. Again, back wall. Sometimes you will score some own goals. It's natural. I do myself too sometimes. But so many goals, like I said, one to four. Every match this way, one to four with strategy 12. So I'm guaranteed seven, eight goals. And then you work on not conceding. You've got your superpowers. You use them only when you need to. And back wall again. Uh, three goals back wall and five goals, four or five goals using tip 12. So, you know, let the robot use all of its superpowers. Only use yours when needed and none were required here. Again, pretty easy win. No skill cards. Level six character. I mean, there you go, guys. A little bit of fire for you. And let's check the level of the robot. As we said, no skill cards or no plus eight equals level six and we'll be moving on to the next match very shortly okay match five out of eight kraken level six with skill cards plus six versus flash punk level six again the tips are on the bottom i will not go over them orally you just must remember them so i think i'm choosing kraken here which is a level six and i have the Plus six jump 
plus six size, double goal, superpower and free superpower. So it's different. Now we have seen from the previous videos that because we are choosing level six characters and we are using plus six cards, most likely the robot is at level six. So again, throughout the videos, these tips will not change. They do make a difference. This is, you know, the fifth match and it's worked so far and they're very good. And I've, I've learned this all on my own. I haven't um, been on YouTube to figure this out. Of course, click the like button. It's important for me to keep going. So let's see what happens here. Um, bomb tip, as we saw, you want to strike the ball when your opponent is close to you. For the giant goal, you want to make sure that you attack the ball. And um, there you go on the freeze. It doesn't always work, but you want to be halfway through the bar in the ground. Again, tip number 12. You're going to see this tip so often. And fireball here. I got lucky. But uh, here, you see how I stayed on the ground. I didn't jump. If I had jumped, the ball would have gone underneath me. So again, you know, not jumping too often is very important. Spending most of the time in your half, as we've seen with the fence. I will put the fence on the last two matches. This is very important. Spending most of the time in your half. Not venturing too often. Jumping when requiring. When required, sorry. Very important. Pop the ball up. Draw the robot in. Shoot. It won't change. I think I'm doing it again here. Draw the robot in. Time your shot. And you can see... You know, I don't have plus eight cards. I have, you know, plus six with a level six character. So the principles are the same. They do work. It's all about timing, practice and repetition. And there will be a video. I think it's match seven or eight. I don't remember. But the robot constantly jumps. So there's a technique there to, to counter him as well. I got lucky, but use the back wall sort of. Again, I'm attacking, staying in my half, anticipating the shots where they are going, mastering the art of using the back wall again applies here. So don't jump too often. You see, I counted the goal by not jumping there. And finally, you let the robot use all of its superpowers. Don't use yours until, unless you have to. None were needed here. Using the back wall again, shooting down. Very comfortable win. No superpowers used. So that's how it's done, guys. And let's just check now to make sure the robot was indeed a level six with my skull here. And we click on the name of the robot. And as you can see, level six, I had a level six. I think if I had plus eight cards, it would have given me a different character. We move on to the next one now. All right, match number six out of eight, Sky Master level seven with skill cards plus eight versus level seven robot. So again, the tips on the bottom, they will appear every time so that it enters your mind and your brain and it becomes second nature. So here we've got Sky Master with size and jump plus eight. So the robot will be a plus seven uh, level robot. And then I have my two added superpowers, Sky Master. Tips on the bottom. And I have two more videos coming, which will actually be about constantly jumping robots. So this is the last video where I'm putting the fence because the strategy is a bit different. When you play against jumping robots, you have to go in their half. So click the like button, please, if you haven't done so already. So here we have the fence again. And here I got exploded. Couldn't get the opponent close to me. It does happen. Tip number 12, pop the ball up. And now you will see that the ball has frozen and it will do that sometimes. So what you want to do is attack it. I didn't score there, but here's strategy 12 again. Tip 12. It's very repetitive. And here you will see that the robot scores on top. I knew it. Jump too early. Again, tip number 12. That's how you score most of the goals, actually. Tip number 12 and using the back wall. Yeah, I didn't have the time to react. It was too quick. It does happen. Again, tip number 12. You will see it coming again, 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 and again. I think here it happens one more time. There you go. So regardless whether you have, um, you know, skill cards or not, the principles and fundamentals are the same. Again, 
I know where the ball is going to go. So when you remember this, you know, it becomes second nature to jump. Your, your body and your brain will adapt naturally. And it just becomes second nature. Really, it does. And it takes practice. So that's why I keep putting it on every single match, all the tips. Back wall again, as you've seen. I think there might be another back wall coming up here. Here's the jumping robot. And I will show you how to counter this in the next two videos. Back wall again. You should shoot down. I didn't because if you shoot up, if the robot puts a freeze goal, then it won't go. Again, here I jumped. I jumped too much. See, when you jump too much, this is exactly what happens. And here's what I'm talking about, shooting under the robot. We will see this in the next two matches. Again, back wall. I should have shot down. Sometimes I forget. And you let the robot use all of its superpowers. You know, two seconds left. I could use clone goal. Yeah, I do sometimes. And I haven't used any superpowers. So we were a level seven Skymaster with plus eight skill cards. So let's click on the robot's name. And it should be a level seven. As a matter of fact, I know it is a level seven. So there you go. So little explosion for you coming up. And then we'll be moving on to the next videos. Okay, match seven of eight, summoner level six with skill cards plus six versus flash punk. And midway through the match, the game will freeze. So part of the match, the robot will be jumping. And we know the skills, the tips, I'm sorry. We've seen them for six matches now. So just observe the buttons of jump down, jump up. On the bottom right, you will see that they are being automatically pressed. And this happens when you are on a very long winning streak. This is essentially the game telling you that it's time to lose. So the principles, they still apply, but it can be annoying. And uh, eventually you will lose your losing streak. As you can see here, 62 wins. So this is a very long win streak. But the principles still apply. I will get out of the half sometimes because it's required and I will jump more often. This will happen when the game freezes and uh, the next match is only jumping robots. So you will see here principles still apply. Couldn't uh, beat the freeze. Here's the bomb. I'm going to try to strike it just when the robot comes close to me. And then you want to follow him in the goal. So I went outside of the half. The game is not freezing. Pay attention to the to the buttons. Here I got lucky again with the fireball. Now I'm not jumping. The game is not freezing as of now. See, I stayed on the ground. I countered, used the back wall again. Again, tip number 12. It's not mentioned. Not jumping too often. Pop the ball up. Draw the robot in. Shoot. So far the game is not freezing as you can see from the buttons. And now I knew where the ball was going, unfortunately. Couldn't prevent it from going in. Now you can see the game is starting to freeze. Look at the, 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 the shoot. I'm not playing with three fingers. I play with two fingers. So I play with my thumb on the right hand and thumb on the left hand. And now you see what's happening on the bottom right. All buttons are being pressed. So now I'm in a situation where I will have to use my superpowers. And I do have to jump more often. And I do have to take some risks, but I am still applying the same principles. Here, I couldn't jump. The robot, I mean, my, my player just wouldn't jump. And you see, tip number 12 again applies. So you try, even when the game freezes and the game is making buttons being pressed for you, you still want to try to apply it. The principles, the tips, they don't change. You see? I can't jump because it, it just it just freezes. So now I'm in a situation where I have to use superpowers. I just I have no options. Only when needed, and they are needed here. So here I slide the ball past the robot. You see it's a jumping robot. I cannot do the technique that I would usually do, which we will see in the last match. So now I will concede. And this is the advantage of having the freeze in times two. I already used one, so here we go. So freeze guarantees you a goal. That's why I use it. And times two in a situation like that, if we were tied or if I was losing by a goal, it would really come into handy. So this was game freezing. 
and we will see that the robot is at level six. And there we go. We'll be moving on to the next match. Okay, this is the last match. Eight out of eight. Omen level seven with skill cards eight against a jumping robot at level eight. Um, I don't have the intro because I leave the camera on in case I get a jumping robot, which I did in this case towards the end. So for this last match, we are not going to go over the tips. You should know them by now. So let's just analyze what's going on. I just got my tooth removed, so I apologize if, uh, if I don't sound too well. So here again, we want to strike the ball, the bomb when the robot is closest to us. Right now, there's no need to go in the opponent's half. <clears throat> We're just doing what we have been doing, staying in our own half, not jumping too much, too often. The robot hasn't started jumping yet. Now he's starting to. So using the back wall or trying to should result in a goal here. No. And then I jumped again. You will see why you shouldn't be jumping too often. Pop the ball up and shoot. <clears throat> Freeze, I didn't have time to react, it was too quick. And again, I shouldn't have jumped here. Now here the robot starts to jump, so what you want to do is try to control the ball, put it on the ground, <clears throat> and shoot it past him on the bottom, which I'm doing right here. Doesn't always work with practice and mastering your superpowers, you should be able to do it. So I'm trying again here, unfortunately. He read me again we'll try it and you will see that it's a combination of that and tip number 12. it's harder when they jump obviously because you you know you get a bit chaotic and confused here i'm down eight three so i will try to slide the ball past him you see you have to time the shot perfectly right before he jumps you shoot again here i'm trying there you go some goal scored and he keeps jumping you shouldn't panic you should keep your head here i'm using this is the advantage of having times two the double goal here i'm losing and i'm putting a power in and i activate it so see because of the placement of my superpowers i was able to win despite being down pretty heavily so that's the name of the game if the robot is jumping you know you put the ball on the ground and you try to slide it past him so match is over i won we'll be moving on to the conclusion now so there you have it guys 12 tips do make use of them they're very good they obviously work because you've seen eight matches so it takes time to practice it doesn't it won't always work when you first start there'll be some errors sometimes you'll score some own goals but the robots have artificial intelligence and it's pretty much the same for everyone. Now, there are some times where you will see the robot jump very high, not so high, and strike the ball where there is this much of a gap. There's nothing you can do there. This will probably happen when you're on a winning streak. So I advise you when this happens to just learn to time your jumps correctly. Um, there are no remedies. You just have to learn to read the robot. These tips work and I'm very glad I provided this to you. So hopefully this will enable you to increase your winning percentage. All these tips are absolutely important. Choosing your superpowers carefully, um, placing your superpowers carefully, as we saw, makes a massive difference. Um, choosing the skill cards, as we've seen when you use plus eight and probably plus 10 when it comes out, you are going to be paired with level seven robots or eight robots. When you use plus six or nine, you are paired against, you know, robots that are at level six. Um, you must make sure that the robot uses all of its superpowers before you use yours because it is a commodity. It costs money every time you do. And then obviously you get better because you know you can beat the robot without using too many superpowers. That was tip number four. You need to learn to master how to counter all the superpowers. It takes time. It takes practice. The robot doesn't use a whole lot of different superpowers, so you'll get the hang of it. And of course, only use your superpowers when needed or required. This was well illustrated in the examples. And, uh, you know, spend most of the time in your half. As you've seen, it makes a massive difference because when you are in your half, the difference between the top bar and you is much smaller than it is when you are in front of the robot where the difference is much higher. So this is all about geometry and algebra. 
We've seen the use of the back wall, very important. Robot is in front of you, you in between the goal and the robot. Try to gather some techniques to pop the ball over. This makes a massive difference. Mass lots of goals scored during the game. Don't jump too often. I'm not saying don't jump at all, but don't just be something, you know, you just press the buttons. Bots will score underneath you. You lose focus, you lose timing. So stay on the ground, only jump when and if required. Um, remember that the robot will primarily score from the top bar or right underneath you. So you know where the ball is going. You just have to, you know, time your jumps and anticipate. Just recognizing that there are only two spots from which the robots can score. Even at this level right now, because it's in your head, you're going to concede two or three less goals immediately from the get-go. Uh, keep the ball on the ground when the robot is jumping, as we saw. You know, you, 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 you control the ball, put it on the ground, slowly move towards the robot. As he jumps, you shoot down. And finally, the 12th tip. Um, this is the bread and butter of the game. You pop the ball up, you slightly move forward, you move backward, time your shot, jump and score. So these were the tips. They work. As you've seen, that's why I played eight matches. Those matches were played in the course of one day. So, you know, I will show you at the end where I am. I, I don't think I have a loss. So, you know, and if I do get a loss, it is because of a disconnect. So these tips work. Do apply them. I gave great examples. So I don't think I will be posting a playing video anytime soon because as you know, my channel is informational, but this is definitely something that will help you guys. If you haven't subscribed or liked the, the video and subscribed to the channel, please do. I will be releasing more videos. So thank you for watching. It was a very long video. Big ups. Stay safe. This is Pounce. I need to shave my head. Bye.